One year after two bombs went off the finish line of the Boston Marathon, a city comes together to run again. Vice President Joe Biden made a trip north on the one-year anniversary of the bombing. Find out why. In the strange twist for an inspiring anniversary, I'll have the story for you coming up next. Welcome to a very special edition of WEBN News. I'm Maggie Smolka. And I'm John King. Tonight we look back at the one-year anniversary of the Boston Marathon. And we look forward on how a resilient city bounced back again and ran again. We want to take you back one year ago. The date was April 15th, the time 2.50 p.m. Two bombs exploded at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. The aftermath devastated the city of Boston. By the end of the day, three spectators who were standing at the finish line were dead. Dozens more were taken to the hospital. That day, we watched as ordinary citizens became heroes. It was the day everything changed in Boston, and some wondered if we would ever run again. It was a day that was supposed to be about celebrating an accomplishment and ended in a way nobody could imagine. The following interviews may be difficult to watch, but they help to tell the story of the tragedy. Take a look. It was just, it was awful. Um, I'm an emergency room nurse and I've never just seen anything piece. like that before. A lot of smoke yeah. and there's just a lot of, a lot of uncertainty at that point. Right when they stopped. Okay. So Love you. We couldn't go any farther. Right there, they just immediately stopped. Okay, right now this is not the priority. The priority is get everybody out of the area. Okay, so they're all safe. Family was waiting for me at the finish line, so I was just worried about them. We just now got together, so. It's, it's a major explosion. Get it through your head. It's a major explosion. So we finally tracked her down a long time later, so we're very happy to all be safe and safe. For some, fears of what happened last year resurfaced. This happened just hours after a moving tribute to victims had dispersed. Stephanie De La Cruz is at the finish line on Boylston Street. Stephanie, walk us through what this was all about. Well, John, it was an intense night here for everyone, and police were not taking any chances when they saw a man running down the streets right here with a backpack. And when they told people to step back because they were going to blow up the backpack, nobody stepped back. People just wanted to see what was going to happen. The backpack was blown up as a precaution near the finish line, which left some tense moments at the one-year anniversary of the marathon bombing. I was in the Marine Corps, I went over to Iraq, and then, you know, even last year, I never expected to see, you know, IEDs on Boylston Street, and then a year later, you got some knucklehead walking down the street trying to, I don't know if it's a sick prank or what his deal was, but... You know, a year, two years in a row now on the same, on the same street, same spot. And he said, oh my God, he said, well, people I just saw. He said, this guy was wearing a black long gown, like a graduation gown, and in some kind of a black veil over his face, and he had the eyes cut out with white Halloween cake, and he had 666 on his hands. The man she is describing is Kevin Edson. He was stopped by a police officer who saw him running barefoot with a backpack in Bolson Street. And police later said there was only a rice cooker filled with confetti inside. Edson is now being held for a $100,000 bail and is being sent to Bridgewater State Hospital for further evaluation. Live in Bolson Street, Stephanie Delacruz. Hey, thank you, Stephanie. Back to you, John. Vice President Joe Biden came to speak to those who were impacted by last year's tragedy. He offered words of encouragement to a crowded room at the Heinz Convention Center. Biden, who had attended the moment of silence at the finish line earlier that day, applauded Bostonians. He said he had never seen a tribute like the one he had seen that day. Biden also commended the strength of Boston. You are Boston strong. But America is strong. They're not unlike you all around America. That's what makes us so proud of this city and this state, what makes me so proud to be an American. It's that we have never, ever, ever yielded to fear. Never. Sports Illustrated taking a historic photo at the finish line. 
Last year, the magazine featured three policemen responding to the tragedy itself, but this year it's just the opposite. The new cover shows how Boston is staying strong and moving forward. I was down at the finish line when thousands of Bostonians came together, snapping a new image for Boston. Some waking up as early as four in the morning, getting a front row spot. I was totally determined to be here and be part of this um, historic moment. Joined by survivors. These events are trying to make happy memories over the bad memories, trying to layer over layer over layer to cover up what they did. The mayor. Today's a great way to start the marathon, absolutely. And heroes. Very excited about seeing all these wonderful people participating and coming out early in the morning. The issue hit stands April 16th. In Boston, Maggie Smolka, WEBN. Bostonians received an outpouring of support in the days following the marathon bombing. Copley Square became the official memorial site for those affected. The memorial was dismantled last June. And the piece is spent almost a year in the Boston City Archives. That is, until earlier this month when they were put on display at the Boston Public Library. Mike Lucas spent some time at the memorial. What comes out of the exhibit is more the hope for the future than the tragedy of the past. Dear Boston, Messages from the Marathon Memorial is a reformation of the spontaneous tribute that honored last year's marathon victims and survivors at Copley Square. I think the display they put on here is beautiful and just very, very moving and heartwarming. It's a very fitting and uh, moving tribute to all those who were involved and affected. The exhibition is at the Boston Public Library, about one block away from where the bombs went off last year. People from all over the country flock to the exhibit to show their respect. It's uplifting to see that there are so many good people that pull together to help each other at times like this. Very powerful, emotional. Just the way that Boston's come together so strong, and uh, it's, I, I can't really even put it into words, to be honest with you. Despite last year's tragedy, the general consensus is that the 2014 Boston Marathon will be bigger and better than ever. It'll be a beautiful event. Twice as busy as it usually is. They're anticipating probably close to a million people. The city of Boston is promising more security this year, but not everyone feels safe yet. I don't know if I'm going to stay in the neighborhood um, that particular day. With the 2014 marathon less than two weeks away, the Dear Boston exhibition is one of the final steps in closing the book on last year's events. In Boston, Mike Lucas, WEBN. When we come back, increased security Find out what the city of Boston is doing to make sure the marathon is safe. And emotions ran high here at the finish line. Hear what some runners had to say coming up. Plus, a look at the social media scene from this year's marathon. How sportswear companies and others use Twitter to celebrate, remember, and run again. Stay with us. Welcome back. History was made at the 118th Boston Marathon. The timing could not have been any better. The women's and men's wheelchair divisions were first to take off in Hopkinton. Tantiana McFadden rolled across the finish line first. Not a bad 25th birthday present for McFadden. This was her second year racing in the marathon. It was also her second victory. She finished with a time of 1 hour, 35 minutes and 6 seconds. For the men, Ernst Van Dyke took the title. He finished the race in 1 hour, 20 minutes and 36 seconds. Van Dyke earns his 10th Boston Marathon title. My time was pretty fast here in Boston, especially with all the climbs and all the downhills. Um, so I was really happy with today and it's just been such a whirlwind and excitement and lots of training and hard work. On the course today, it was really, really unbelievable. <clears throat> we had people all the way and that last five miles, it was like a human tunnel of emotion that we were going through. And as tired as I was, I just couldn't let up. They just pushed me all the way. And I was literally sprinting that last five miles because the people made me do that. They carried me. Not long after the wheelchairs rolled out of Hopkinton, the elite men and women run runners took off too. American Shalane Flanagan was favorited for much of the race. She was dealt an upset, however, and came in seventh. Rita Jeptu was able to take over the lead. She held on and took the race. She finished in two hours, 18 minutes, and 57 seconds. Jeptu sets a new course record with her time. This was her third marathon win. And if the city wasn't proud enough, an American wins for the elite men. 
Meb Kaflesgi is the first American champion in over 30 years. He brought home the title with a time of two hours, eight minutes, and 37 seconds. As I was like uh, not happy because I, uh, there is this problem for pumping and um, for me, um, I'm happy because uh, I decided to come here in Boston to run again um, to, sup to support uh, people in here in Boston and to show people here in Boston we are together. For me, it was a win to come here healthy in one piece because of what happened last year and the rest how I do is, is mental game and I'm happy to announce that I, my dream came true today. Not everyone can come in first, but anyone who crosses the finish line is a winner. Erin Farley talked to runners after they crossed. She's live at the finish line right now. Erin, tell us about the emotion you saw as these runners ended their 26.2 mile journey. You know, Maggie, it was absolutely incredible here at the marathon. You can see right here, there wasn't an empty spot along the marathon route. And after runners crossed the finish line, they met up with their families right by the public garden. And when spectators couldn't find a spot to stand, they found any way they could to watch the marathon, like sitting on a roof. Marathon goers made t-shirts and held flags to cheer runners on as they headed towards that finish line. But the best part was seeing a random stranger come together to support one another. And going off of that, I spoke with one man who ran the marathon last year and ran it again this year. And as we spoke, he broke down and started crying. And it was that emotion that really symbolized what marathon runners were feeling after they crossed the finish line. We waited a year for this, and this was our, our chance to just to just prove to everybody that, that uh, you know, we're, we're stronger than anything you can throw at us. Oh my gosh, it was amazing because the last time we did it was last year. and. It was just filled with emotion this year. It was awesome. That crowd was amazing the whole freaking yep. way. We're like. so grateful to be here, and we love this city, and today we took that finish line back. To all my friends, we all said we would never do Boston again. We all did it because of last year. We all did it because of last year. It seemed that message was what really proved marathon runners were not stopping this year, and it showed just how strong the city of Boston is. At the finish line, I'm Erin Farley. Back to you, Maggie. Thanks, Erin. Law enforcement's made safety a top priority at this year's race. They conducted bag checks, installed more cameras, and had undercover officers along the route. But how safe did spectators feel? We go to Mike Lucas again. He was at the finish line and he talked with these people. I've seen so many security people here, plus I knew that they were going to take extra precautions in order to ensure safety after what happened last year. There are 5,000 uniform officers and 500 undercover patrolling the streets to control the largest crowd in the 118 year history of the Boston Marathon. It's crazy, there are, there are like so many people and everyone's like, there's a certain excitement, I guess, that uh, everyone's looking for now because it's about healing. It's hard to not feel safe. Everyone's just so excited and happy to be here. One year after the Boston Marathon tragedy, the city is back out in full force. The atmosphere down here by the finish line is enthralling, but more importantly, everybody feels safe. I feel safe and I'm a jaded person and as a criminal investigations graduate, I wouldn't have came here if I didn't have some faith into the criminal justice system. At first I didn't want to come because I was nervous, but when I saw them like checking your bag and everything, I was like, okay, I feel like a little better about it. And like the news made me feel a little safer. The vamped up security includes 40 checkpoints, baggage checks, and security watch posts on Boylston and the surrounding streets. It's all because of the cameras, the police, the dogs, the people. I think everybody else, everybody's watching for everybody else. While safety is the main priority, this marathon is also about healing. In Boston, Mike Lucas, WEBN. And security isn't the only safety measure. People attending this year's marathon were also paying more attention to their surroundings. WEBN reporter Lucas Frankel talked with one woman who says last year has made her more aware. Sandra Downing was one of thousands at the finish line of last year's Boston Marathon. She was waiting for her husband to finish. I was actually standing right here at the spot of ground. My husband is a runner and he actually came in, he did 240 
That was nine minutes before the first bomb went off. Luckily for Downing, her and her husband were already a few blocks away. Still, she saw and heard everything. My family member were calling me all over because they knew I was here. Because um, my husband is a marathon runner, so um, it was very devastated and sad. Downing says that experience changed the way she will conduct herself at this year's marathon. Where I was standing, that those bombers, they were they maybe rubbed shoulder with me, but I wasn't really paying attention. So now I will be more aware. Because last year, if I if I had seen a bag or a knapsack somewhere, I wouldn't, I would I would have passed it. But this year, anything that I see looks suspicious, I will make sure I pay more attention to it. Downing is also looking forward to seeing the marathon send a message to last year's bombers. And, um, we can't let cowards stop us. Monday's marathon will once again give the city of Boston the opportunity to show that it truly is Boston strong. Reporting from the finish line, Lucas Frankel, WEBN. And as hundreds of thousands cheer on the runners every year at the marathon, many of them root for them virtually. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram all light up within marathon-related tweets, posts, and hashtags on race day. Boston Strong was a top trending topic as Boston looked back, but moved forward. For more on the social media scene, this year WEBN's Dustin Blipkowski joins us now. Dustin? Thanks, Maggie and John. If getting to Boston on Marathon Monday is tough for you, there are plenty of ways for folks elsewhere to join in on the festivities, many of them online. The hashtags, selfies, and tweets from this year's marathon took on a special meaning. All sorts of people honored the victims of last year's race and celebrated the athletes running again. Sports gear manufacturers were among them. Reebok had its hashtag Boston Conquers All. And Adidas, the official sponsor of the race and makers of those marathon jackets seen everywhere in town on Marathon Weekend, used the hashtag We All Run Boston. But it was New Balance, Boston's hometown sneaker makers, who took it one step further. They designed a limited edition shoe just for this year's race and plastered ads for it all over the city. They let me see it up close at this year's Runners Expo. Take a look. Some of the key elements here is, you know, you've got the map of Massachusetts in the forefoot and you go into the back, uh, placing that heart around Boston. Really, the shoe was all about the heart of Boston. Uh, and really the, the uh, response that people had to the tragic events last year. Uh, some of the kind of cool discovery details, you have the heart back there in the forefoot, or sorry, in the heel. Uh, and then uh, something really cool here, if I can get these laces out, is uh, kind of a nod to Boston is you've got, uh, it says on the aglets, uh, run faster, F-A-S-T-A-H, going obviously after the Boston accent. So just some really cool discovery details bringing this shoe to life. All right, and this, obviously took some time to put together like do you have any idea how long it actually took to go from concept to product here yeah sure so uh, I mean like any of our shoes it's really kind of a 16 or to 18 month process uh, so we actually started designing this shoe uh, back in April uh, 2013 and here we are a year later finally on shelf and selling shoes all right anything else yeah I guess uh, you know the one thing I should point out is obviously the uh, love Boston hashtag uh, this is kind of really the campaign that you're seeing all over Boston that's really where it was birthed from uh, so we're encouraging uh, runners and spectators to really kind of go on, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, tag Love Boston and tell us in the world what you love about Boston and why you love Boston. Still, marketing wasn't the only thing people were using social media for. Spectators, runners and even these state troopers brought us marathon moments from along the route and around the world. That's Deputy Superintendent Hannafin, Lieutenant Colonel Matthews, Deputy Lieutenant Coulter, and Colonel Tim Albin at the starting line in Hopkinton. They're getting ready to protect and run the race right here. Meanwhile, at the other end of the course, some of the survivors of last year's tragedy were front and center. This selfie is from Adrian Hazlitt Davis, the dancer who lost her leg. She's at the finish line with fellow survivor Jeff Bauman, the man seen in one of the iconic photos from that day being rushed by Carlos Arondondo to get medical attention. Powerful images like that one came from beyond Boston as well. The soldiers in this photo taken at Bagram Air Force Base in Afghanistan are running in a race just like the Boston Marathon. 600 people participated and a Plymouth native working for the State Department won this year's race. Besides being almost halfway around the world from Boston and in a war zone, the race is also different because it starts at 3 a.m. And finally, we want to highlight a tweet from an Emmanuel College student that sums up Marathon Monday this year. Samantha Adams tweeted this picture of a man running with the American flag. Everyone in the crowd and the runner behind him are all excited. 
The caption speaks for itself. So clearly an emotional day along the course and online for many in Massachusetts and beyond. Maggie, John, back to you. Thanks, Dustin. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, fundraising is the only way some racers get to the, run the marathon. Find out what it takes to raise this money and what charities participants are running for. And some prayer flags show up on the Boston Common. Find out where they came from and why they're so important. <laughs> The Boston Athletic Association saw a surge in charity runners this year. People ran for personal charities such as Cancer Research. Others ran for marathon causes such as the One Fund. Tamara Sikarczyk got the story behind why some people chose to run. The annual Boston Marathon has always been a day of giving. Volunteers hard at work before sunrise, participants running to raise money for charities, and spectators traveling from around the world to show support. Teams become representatives for all different types of causes, from One Front Boston, a charity supporting the victims of last year's bombings, to children's hospitals and breast cancer awareness. And after months of collecting donations to prepare for the race, Mile 26 reminds people like Richard Saravo what Marathon Monday is all about. My son Joseph's running this year. It's his second year running the marathon. Um, he runs in honor of his brother Matthew. Matty was a five-year-old son who had passed away with epilepsy. So uh, he's always run inspired by Matty. Saravo is the founder of the Matty Fund, an organization that helps children and families touched by epilepsy, a seizure disorder affecting 3 million Americans and 65 million others worldwide. Mr. Saravo's son, Joseph, never misses an opportunity to empower others affected by the condition through raising money doing what he loves, running. It's amazing watching Joe run. Um, you, know, you know, you have goosebumps the whole day thinking about it, watching his times, uh, knowing that he's doing it for his younger brother. Ever since his younger brother passed away, Joseph Saravo has played an enormous role in his family's foundation year after year and mile after mile. We do a road race in Rhode Island, the Maddie Fund 5K. Uh, runs it every year. A couple of years he's won it. His friends come down from Boston. So truly inspired by his younger brother. And um, as parents, we couldn't be any, any more glorified uh, being you know, associated with Joe and uh, his training, his dedication and commitment to running. This wasn't the first time Joseph has run marathons to keep his brother's memory alive, but it may have been the most memorable. In Boston, I'm Tamara Sikarczyk, WEBN. They came from all over the nation. Prayer banners covered the Boston Common leading up to the Marathon Monday. The project was started by two women in Florida. They wanted to keep memories of last year's bombings victims alive. The banners have been making their way around the country since last May. They have made appearances at NASCAR races, Major League Baseball games, and even Mount Rushmore. The organizers of this project were on the common just days before the marathon. They shared exactly why they started this project and the impact it had on them. Our founder, Carrie Wagner, wanted to do something for the city. She had actually only been to Boston one time before, but she was a previous news reporter and had seen a lot of atro atrocities and really wanted to show that there were good people out in the world. One of my favorite squares was actually done by my daughter, and she drew a rainbow. And I said, well, that's beautiful. And she said, well, I did a rainbow because that's what happens after a storm, and you know everything will be okay, and I want to send Boston a rainbow. Marathon Weekend is a host to a number of different events. A five-kilometer race was held two days before the big 42-kilometer race. Some people are focused hard on the finish line. Others are just in town to enjoy themselves. Priscilla Ligori caught up with some unconventional runners. Three Boston. One, two, three. Ah! Two days before Marathon Monday and 10,000 people hit the ground running for Boston's 5K. Among the runners at the Common, Team Mullet Marathon. We're a lifestyle dedicated to healthy living, helping others, letting our hair down and having a good time. And we just wanted to come down to Boston today and deliver a whole bunch of free high fives to the people that mean so much to the city, that means so much to the running community. The goal of the Mullet Marathon was to revive positive energy at Boston's running events. For us, the high five is the symbol of everything we do. Health, happiness, helping others, having a good time, and ending with high five. The men were impressed by Boston's resilience and strength. I'd say the best 5K we've been running. I mean, just, just to be here and to feel that energy, you know, it's just a, it's such a special, special, special day. Triple amputee Cameron Clapp was one of many inspired by the Mullet Marathon. 
You know what's incredible is the spirit of Boston. You know, today we're all here together. We run together. The Mullet Marathon has been delivering high fives across the country for over 10 years. Uh, you know, we run to the supermarket, we run to work, um, you know, we run home from work, uh, you know, run to the dentist. So, you know, we're always running. We only usually stop for interviews. The group assured they'd be at more marathons in the future. In Boston, Priscilla Liguori, WEBN. Oh well, those were some hairstyles on those. Oh, dude, I've never seen a mullet look so good. Those guys were <laughs> hilarious. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. We thank you for joining us on this special edition of WEBN. I'm John King. And I'm Maggie Smolka. To keep up to date with our latest coverage, be sure to go to our website, WEBN.TV. Have a great night.